Okay, uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, welcome back to tonight's webinar. So my name is Abigail and I'm your host tonight. So before we start, I will just like to do a, a sound check. So if you could hear me, uh, could you, uh, let me just bring out the poll. Yeah. Yeah, if you could hear me, could you just pick yes in the poll? Yes. Okay, that's great. All right, so let's start our webinar tonight. Yep, but uh, before that, uh, I have a disclaimer here. So whatever we share tonight is uh, basically just for general information and educational purposes. So it does not constitute any recommendation to buy or sell any investment products. Yep, and then uh, moving on, this is some uh, in little background about our company. So our company is called Philip Capital Sundran Bohat. We are incorporated in the year 1995. So our company has been around for close to 30 years and we are a wholly owned subsidiary of the uh, Philip Capital Holdings. And some of you may know, uh, we were actually formerly known as Philip Futures because uh, previously we only offer futures. And now as we expanded and grew our business and offering, so we have since renamed to Philip Capital. Okay, uh, apart from that, we are also a trading participant of the uh, Busa, Deri uh, Busa Malaysia Derivatives, a participant organization of uh, Busa Malaysia Securities and a holder of the Capital Market Services License, which basically means that we are a legal and regulated broker in Malaysia. Yeah, so Philip Capital has offices across Malaysia. Our mother company is actually from Singapore. But for Malaysia, our headquarters is based in KL and we have 11 branches in both East and West Malaysia. So we call it a Philip uh, Investor Centers. And if you are from any of these cities, uh, you are welcome to drop by our branches to inquire uh, about investment related services. Okay. Yeah, so this slide uh, shows the Busa Excellence Awards that we have received for the past many years. So. Um, last year, we are also honored to be awarded as the number uh, as the first runner up for the best retail derivatives uh, trading participant, as well as the second runner up for the best retail derivatives trading participant. Yep, yeah. uh, overall derivatives participant. Yeah, so we continue to upgrade and provide the best uh, value to serve our clients better. All right. So Philip Capital um, has a wide global network. Uh, we have offices in 15 different countries spread out across the globe. As such, uh, we also do serve an international client base. And for our futures trading, uh, we also provide products listed in global exchanges from the US, as you can see here, from Japan, uh, Hong Kong, Europe, Singapore, and so on. So with our global coverage, our clients can trade both local and foreign products within the same platform. All right, so onto our products, uh, we offer three main categories. So the first one is futures, uh, which include diverse markets like the equity index futures, agricultural, metal, energy, and as well as the interest rate futures. And the next one is equities. Uh, so you can trade uh, Malaysia shares, US, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Australia shares with us. And apart from just shares, our uh, clients can also trade ETFs, warrants, and IPOs here. And the third one is the contracts for difference or known as CFDs, okay? We offer local BUSA shares and US shares CFDs. But if you're interested in trading the US indexes like the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and also NASDAQ, then we also offer the CFD at a very attractive rate. So if you're thinking uh, which products should I uh, go for, so if you are someone who likes to take advantage uh, when the market is going down, all right, uh, you can look at derivative products such as the futures and the CFDs. They are a good choice because uh, you can actually short the market and make a profit. Essentially, it means that you can just trade both ways like, when the market goes up or the market goes down, right? And apart from that, uh, another good thing about the uh, derivatives is that you are able to trade with a margin or a uh, leverage, right? Meaning your, your capital upfront is a lot lesser. But if you're more of an in, uh, investor or like, or you like a slower pace of investing, all right, you plan to invest for the long term, then of course, uh, stocks is a suitable 
uh, option for you to explore. Our rates for the foreign markets are actually very uh, competitive. So if you are interested, do let us know and we can contact you accordingly. Yep. Okay, so why choose uh, Philip Capital as your broker? First, uh, we are an award-winning multi-asset broker and we are well established and recognized in the market. Secondly, uh, we offer 24 hour broking and execution support. If you have issues regarding your trades and account, um, you can always call in our dealing desk anytime, even at night, right? So our dealers are always ready to assist you. And next, we also provide uh, advisory service on uh, what kind of products you like to trade and how you can get started. And next, we do send out our latest market news to our clients on a daily basis. So you can be sure to get the latest updates on the markets. And as mentioned earlier, um, our clients can trade a wide variety of products through our platform. Right. And lastly, we have the online account opening, which is very convenient for our clients to get started. Okay, here at uh, Philip Capital, we constantly provide uh, a lot of educational resources for our investors. So we offer free one-to-one -one coaching sessions. So if you like a personalized coaching uh, on different markets, let's say for example, futures or stocks, right? Or how to use the platform, we can arrange an appoint appointment to guide you for free. All right, apart from that, we also often conduct uh, free seminars and webinars, uh, one like tonight. All right, you can start trading by opening an account with us for free as well. Yeah, so this is uh, the one, our one-to-one -one, uh, coaching sessions. Uh, they are tailored to beginners who want to know uh, more of the uh, introductions uh, on, on some of these topics like futures, CFD and stocks. And also how to use the platform and all that. Uh, previously I have mentioned. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, we are more than happy to assist you. Just let us know and then we can do an appointment. Yeah. And then for more uh, educational resources, you can also check out our upcoming seminars and webinars uh, by scanning this QR code or uh, alternatively, you can also visit our website uh, to check the uh, event schedules, right? We invite a lot of speakers from the industry to give uh, market updates and insights. Uh, it is a good learning, uh, learning opportunity, like I would say, so do feel free to join us uh, for our events. Okay. Yeah, so this is uh, for those who trade stocks. Uh, we conduct uh, weekly market calls. All right, so you can join our research team on the market views and updates for newly published reports every Monday at 11.15 a.m. And if you want to learn about like technical analysis, you know, how to spot, you know, entry and exit points, and then this is for you, okay? Uh, our analysts will do uh, technical analysis on live counters every night, uh, every Monday night at 8 p.m. So these calls will be done uh, via Zoom online. So you're interested, you can uh, maybe take a picture and scan the QR code. Yeah. Okay, so this is our online account opening site. Uh, okay, you can open an account. Or you can open an account for stocks, futures, and also CFDs, all done online, which is very convenient. So if you are interested to uh, have a look at a, uh, or give us a try as a broker, okay, you can just scan the QR code here. It will take, take you directly to our online application. So yeah, if you require any assistance as well, you can look for us or drop us any inquiry. Okay, now onto our trading platform. Okay, so the first one is uh, Philip Nova. This is uh, the platform that we use for futures trading. So it is a web-based platform and is uh, re relatively simple to use. So we also have mobile app and uh, mobile app for this on Apple and also Android devices. And our platform is equipped with a wide range of technical indicators, live charts, uh, market depth function, and you can get access to both local and foreign products. And if you are not our client yet, but you want to try out our platform, uh, we have a demo account here for you to try out. So yeah, if you're interested, you could uh, register a demo account and try the interface. And secondly, for stocks, uh, the platform we use will, uh, is the Poems Global 2.0. So our platform uh, offers advanced trading tools such as the technical analysis chart, stocks analytics, 
news and also analyst commentaries and also custom uh, customizable alerts that provide users um, with an edge in making informed uh, investment decisions. So it is easy to navigate uh, for new and experienced investors. Okay. And uh, lastly, uh, if you want to trade share CFDs, uh, this will be the platform we'll be using, which is called the Philip CFD Trader. So uh, this is pretty much how it looks like. So you can customize the layout, you can see the charts, price quotes and positions all in one screen. So it's easy for you to manage your trading as well. All right. Okay, moving on um, to our promotions. Currently, we are running a few. Okay, the first one is the Trade and Earn with Philip. So you can stand a chance, right, to win exciting prizes like the iPad, um, the AirPods, the Apple Watch, and also up to 1,800 touch and go reload pin, right? When you trade any product with us, it can be futures, it can be stocks, it can be CFDs, right? Of course, uh, the more you trade, right, the chances of you uh, getting more rewards are, of course, higher. All right, this promotion will run uh, till the end of uh, this year. So, yeah, it's a good time to explore, right, if you like to try. Okay start investing and the next one is the foreign stock fiesta so this promotion is uh, for the foreign stocks only so if you personally invest in the us singapore and also hong kong uh, markets you can participate in this promotion and get a welcome reward when you open and fund your stocks account and um Additionally, you can get more rewards right when you start trading in these three markets as well. So if you're interested to know more, you can scan the QR code. Yep. All right. Uh, before we dive into our topic tonight, uh, let me introduce you to our speaker, Jin Hao. Okay, he is the founder and also the chief master uh, trainer of the street finance. So Jin Hao started um, his investing in a capital market since a fairly early stage, around uh, 19 years old. And with his expertise and also experience over the years, he is able to teach trading in the futures and also stocks market through his program that he offers. So I am very sure like uh, he has a lot of value to share with us uh, tonight. So let's hear from him and we are glad to have him on board, Jin Hao. Let me just pass the uh, screen to you. Right. Thanks for the right. introduction. Can you hear me actually? Yes, I can hear and see you very clearly. So are you seeing my slides <laughs> full screen? Uh, not yet. Wait. Uh, uh, wait a moment. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah I can. Just now I can see it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. There's a little bit uh laggy over there. All right. So, so you can see my slide moving, right? Yep. Okay. Cool. That would be great. All right. So, first of all, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. Okay, brought to you by Philip Capital. So first of all, I'd like to thank Philip for having me here today to share with you, okay, uh, today's topic, okay, which is how do how can you become your own portfolio managers? Now, uh, this is uh, actually uh, Philip invited me for a video, uh, sorry, a, a webinar series of three, and this will be the first one. Okay, so tonight we'll be talking more on how can you manage your own portfolio, your trading portfolio okay so uh after that okay during the second sessions third sessions we will be talking more on you know some of the tactics part and also a different thing like behavior psychology kind of things so tonight it's all about okay be your own portfolio manager so again disclaimer whatever shares or stocks i mentioned later they are no uh not buy or sell calls all right so this one just uh you know keep that in mind okay so solely educational purpose only okay so uh, this is me basically uh i have been trading for more than a decade okay and uh yeah i don't have to introduce myself anymore so let's go into what you'll be learning tonight and what you'll be learning tonight can you guys actually type something in the chat? If you can type something something in the chat and you're ready for these sessions, can you please type? 
ready in, in, in the chat. I just want to see if you can actually type something in the chat. I can only see uh, the, one of the, uh, I can only see the MCs typing. Okay, it's okay, never mind. I think it's not really open to the public. It's okay, okay. So now, uh, nonetheless, I want you guys to stay very uh, attentive because this thing, a lot of, uh, you know, people out there don't really touch or teach about, you know, people are always, always obsessed with, you know, strategy. Why you buy here? Why you take profit here? Okay, why this? Why that? But a lot of people do not really touch about risk, psychology, and a lot of things. And I always tell people, trading is only 10% about strategies. And it's 30% money management and 60% your own emotion. Okay, so this is what I, I want to bring out tonight, which is the portfolio management part, which highly related to risk. Okay, highly related to risk. So the first thing is understand the concept of R multiples. Now, a lot of traders out there do not understand R multiples. Okay, and this is the concept that I'll be sharing with you tonight. Now, second, how professionals manage portfolios and how we can do it too. Now, one of my mentors actually brought me to meet a lot of fund managers. And this is how they, you know, manage the risk of, couple of millions or even billions sometimes okay so there are things that we can learn from them and third how to leverage with proper risk management so you know trading stock sometimes can be uh some people say okay it's capital intensive okay it's like you have a hundred thousand a hundred thousand if you make 20 percent a year which is already a lot and then it's only like twenty thousand. to some people maybe it's not a lot of money no let let alone if your trading capital is only you know, a few thousands. So now leverage is something that we use a lot of time. Okay. If you're swiping your credit cards, you're leveraging your finances. If you're buying a house, you're also leveraging. But as far as stock trading or investing is concerned, a lot of people are afraid of leveraging. Okay. Now in this webinar, today's sessions, you're going to learn how can you quantify your risk and control your risk as accurate or as at the best you can, and then you can use leverage in a very, you know, risk conscious way. And the fourth is how can you scale your portfolio return? Okay. So once the risk part is being well taken care, then we only talk about return. Now, a lot of traders, you know, the, the first thing is that how much money can I make? Okay. But they never talk about how well can they manage risk? Okay. Now, let's dive into the content for tonight. Now, there are different levels of understanding about risk, okay? Of thousands of people who trade out their bid, they trade stocks, they trade futures, they trade whatever instruments, there are these different levels of understanding about risk. Now, and whenever I talk to a person, then I know, okay, what kind of language I want to use or what level they are at, whether or not they are risk conscious, okay? What is the level of understanding about risk? So you have the most bottom, the most bottom, I call it the dollar amount mindset, okay? In the, this is where the most retailers or most beginners or most amateurs will fall into, is the dollar amount mindset. And the second is percentage game mindset, okay? And the third is what we call the R multiple mindset. All right. So what are these, you know, kind of mindsets? What are the levels? So if you ask a person about who, who has a dollar amount mindset, he will, you know, when you talk to him or her, you will hear things like, how much you make this month? Okay. So, and sometimes I will, you know, try to answer things like, oh, I make, 3% this month, then that person will ask, uh, how much in, in ringgit term or dollar term, your 3%, okay? They want to know about, know about the dollar amount. Now, is this mindset great, okay? Is this mindset great? Now, to us, I'm not trying to say, okay, 
or, or, or say whatever is good or bad, but from a professional perspective, we know that these persons, their understanding about risk is at minimal. Okay, because this is the, the, the most, okay, people will, the most people will react this way. It's like, I go out, not only go out, like, I go home and tell my mom, okay, I invest. The first thing is, how many ringgit you earn, okay? You draw out of money, okay, in Mandarin, okay? So how much you earn? How many thousands or how many hundred, okay? So this is what we call the dollar amount mindset. Now, the second is what, you know, some... Uh, investors or traders that will use this is a language they speak is the percentage gain mindset so they'll ask questions like how how many percent you make this month how many percent drawdown you have on your portfolio due to this losing trade okay how many percent you risk because we know that trading is a percentage game okay remember this trading is a percentage game so it's like you go out and okay, people fight about fixed deposit rates. Okay, you get 3% here, you got 2.9% there. You know, this is what we call rate. But people are con, you know, they are conscious about the rates when they put money in FD. But when it comes to uh, stocks investing or trading, I, I don't know why it takes some people to do time, okay, or some journey to understand that trading stocks is the same thing. It's all about percentage gain of your portfolio, okay? So this is what I call the percentage gain mindset. And I believe most of you, okay, would be here. But you know that in professionals' world, they don't speak this way. Now, I don't go to my, you know, friends who manage some kind of funds and I ask them how, uh, how much you make this month, okay? That is the worst questions that I can ask to a professionals because when I ask this question, it reveals what level I'm at. Okay, so when I talk to, uh, because I, I I know few people who actually manage funds for other people. Okay, and also manage you know, uh, funds lah. Okay, they are they are funds managers in in Malaysia and also outside Malaysia. Okay, so the way we ask is how many hours you make this month. So what is this hours? All about okay what is this r all about okay so this is what we call the risk reward ratio the r and the r multiples that you need to know now many investors and traders get excited when they talk about profits it's like oh 100 150 percent gain okay this is what will make most people excited or some people if oh a hundred thousand dollar in profit okay something like that okay so this is uh, when when your portfolio is small, it's okay to be in a dollar amount, you know, mindset. But if you want to grow, you want to progress, that's not the way. Okay, that's not the way. Okay, so we want to know about you know, ours, or at least the percentage gain. Now, however, from a professional standpoint, how much you risk to make this profit is far more important than how much you make. Okay, so why dollar profit? is not a good indication of how great an investor or trader is. Now, if I go and tell you that, okay, I make, okay, 1 million last year. Okay, now, normal people with no risk conscious or minimal risk conscious will, will say, okay, wow, that's great, this, this guy, okay, make 1 million this year. Okay, but some people will wait, okay, wait a minute, how much is your capital? Okay, do you know that the, the, if you realize that there are levels of understanding here? First, I said this person would make 1 million, for example. Now, now most people say, well, 1 million is great, or you're living a life that is great. But when it comes to trading, you're, you're going to treat it as a business. Okay, so wait a minute, 1 million. So up one level, okay? What would people ask? Okay, 1 million. 1 million is how many percent of your capital? Because a person can have, you know, a 10 million portfolio and make 1 million, okay, which is 10%, and it's great. But another tycoon, okay, can be having like, you know, 30 millions <laughs> or 100 million and put the money in fixed, fixed deposit and make 1 million. That could also be the case. So 1 million is how many percent is what most people would concern about at the next level. So 1 million is how many percent, for example, 
Now, at a most professional level, okay, how much you risk to make this one million and what is the multiple is the most important thing. It's like today, if you tell me you make uh, 20% from trading Tesla stocks, okay, fine. 20% is great. But my question to you is how much you are risking to make this 20%? If traders A were to risk 10% to make this 20% versus trader B, who risk 20% to make 20%, then trader A is better than trader B. All right, so how much you risk to make that return is what we call the R multiples, the concept of R multiples. Okay, so from a professional standpoint, how much you risk to make this profit is far more important than how much you make. Remember this, how much you risk to make that Profit is far more important than, than how much you make. Okay, because if you have this concept of R multiples, okay, embedded in your in your body, in your mind, you can scale any portfolio. Okay, you can scale any portfolio. So now the initial risk is often quoted with R. Okay, is what I call R. This is the distance between your first entry price and your stop loss in trading term. Okay, so apart from that, this is also a percentage of your account size. For example, 1% in this case, okay, for example, that you lose if this particular trade were to go against you. Okay, were to go against you. So, here's an example. You long a stock at 500. Okay, you buy a stock at 500 with a stop loss of $450 per share, for example. Now, your 1R is $50. Okay, it's $50. So, unfortunately, the stock goes down and hit your stop loss at 450 So, what you lose? You lose 1R. Okay? And also, profits and losses are expressed in the multiple of the initial risk which is known as R multiple in this case. So you want your losses to be one R or less if you can, okay, depending on situations and your profits to be as big as possible. So example, if you long a stock at 500 with a SL for, of 450, your one R is $50. Now, if the stock goes up and you take profit at $850, you win seven R. You are winning seven times of what you risk. Okay, this is the concept that you need to, uh, we, we, we need to know. Okay, and this is very important that a lot of people do not know. Okay, so if you know this with this kind of thing in mind, okay, then you will know, okay, what could be the mistakes later or what you need to improve later on in your trading journey. So you can see that this is an example. Okay, this is an example whereby. Okay, your entry for this stock, for example, here is 151.2 and your stop loss is here, okay, based on the chart, okay? And then this is your risk and if you take profits right over here, yes, this, you make 27.54%, but what is the risk reward ratio? The R multiples, 3.68. So this uh, trade, okay, your R multiples is 3.68. So every R, if your portfolio per R is 1%, then your portfolio will be up by 3.68% because of this stock. All right? So I'll give you examples later and how to calculate. So this is another example like for Chin Hin. Okay, so you enter right over here. Let me just show my pointer. You enter right over here. It's a stop loss. Okay. And then you take profit somewhere around here, then it will be 2.84 R. Okay, so once an entry and stop loss is determined, you can get your initial risk of the trade, which is known as R. The next thing is to predetermine how much you want to risk for your portfolio each time you take a trade, known as risk per trade. So in this case, I'll use 1%. So the risk per trade should be constant across all trades. Okay. So for example, a 100,000 portfolio and 1% risk per trade means that every time when you lose, you lose 1%, which is 100, uh, sorry, 1,000. 
So when you have a 2R win, okay, your portfolio will grow by $2,000 or ringgit or 2%. All right, so we goes by multiple. So calculate your position sizings is the thing that we all do when managing our portfolios. Now in layman term is how much to buy. Okay, so if you always have these questions, hey, I want to buy a stock, okay? Okay, I have my setups, I know why I'm buying. But the next question is, how much to buy? Should I buy two lots or buy three lots or buy five lots? Okay, so if you always have this question, this is the answer, it's what I call position sizing. So here's the formula. You take your net liquidation, okay, which is the total of your portfolio value plus whatever remaining cash inside, okay? which is your portfolio value, okay? Times your risk per trade, in this case, 1%. Divide by entry minus stop loss. Your entry is how much? For example, you buy one stock, five ringgit, 20 cents. Your stop loss, four ringgit, 80 cents. Okay, then you plug into the formula. So here's an example. Okay, here's an example. Let's say a net liquidation is 100,000. Okay, your risk per trade is 1%, which should be constant across all trades. Okay, now let's say you have one stock, the entry is 500 and your stop loss is 450. So your position size is 100,000 times 1% divide by entry minus stop loss. Okay, which is 1,000 divided by 50. So you buy 20 units of that particular stock. Okay, 20 units of that particular stock. So this is how okay we manage okay the size of every single trade all right so let me give you another example okay let's say your net liquidation hundred thousand ringgit okay risk per trade one percent entry five ringgit 46 stop loss 495 okay based on your chart based on your analysis now your position size is plug in all the figures and then you buy you the units that you should buy is 1960.78 but we cannot buy uh, uh you know our lot limits right now is in multiples of hundreds so you buy 1900 units you round down you do not round up because when you round up you will be over risking okay and humans sometimes we are prone to you know uh, execution problem or the price may may feel you know one cent below than than whatever your your intended okay buying or selling so it's always good to round down instead of rounding up all right so knowing how much risk how much risk your portfolio is exposed to now if you don't understand the previous part why are we calculating all those stupid things okay this is the reason for example, you have a hundred thousand uh, dollar, and the R is one percent. Okay, and the R is one percent. It's fixed across all uh, trades. Okay, first, you have stock A, whereby your entry is one fifty one point two, and stop uh, the stop loss is one thirty nine point nine. So after calculate your position size, you will be buying eighty eight units and spend 13,305.6, meaning that out of 100,000, you are using 13K to establish this position in stock A. Now, stock B, let's say your entry is 272.4, stop loss is 247.9. You'll buy 40 units, and you have 10,896 exposed, okay, or, or B to, to establish this position. Now, stock C, your entry is 123.55 and your stop loss is 112.46. Again, you plug in all the calculation, you buy 19 units and you spend 11,119.5 to get into these positions. Now the question is, how many percent risk this portfolio is, ex is exposed to? You should be able to tell that it is 3%. Hey, is it possible to open a chat to public? Because I don't know whether or not <laughs> the public understand. Okay. Um, never mind. Okay. Uh, 
if you got any questions that you don't know, maybe later you'll put in Q and A. Okay, because else I, I because I I believe the audience cannot uh type anything in the chat box right now. At least I cannot see. Okay. So um so at first glance, you know that if I trade, I take three positions, I'm exposed to three percent. If I take five positions, I'm exposed to five percent. If I take 10 positions, then I'm exposed to 10%. Meaning that if all the 10 stocks or in this scenario that you see on your screen, if all these three stocks were to hit my stop loss, then my portfolio will be down by 3%. This is the safest way to quantify and manage your risk. Okay? Now, let's go to the next one. Okay? Now, this is not random numbers I plug in. Okay? So, the first stock is actually Apple. Second stock is Nvidia. The third stock is AMD. Okay? So, for uh, the first stock, which is Apple, I exited at 192.84 and I win 3.68 R. So, how much my portfolio will uh, go up because of this trade? The answer is 3.68%. Okay? Because 3.68 R. Okay, and 1%, uh, 1 R is 1% in this scenario. Okay, so again, you can see this is the case. Okay, so I showed this earlier on already. So the risk reward is 3.68. Now next, NVIDIA. I exit at 386.08. And in this case, I win 4.64 R. Okay, so my portfolio go up 4.64% plus minus, okay, usually minus a bit, lah, okay, because of commission and things like that, okay, 4.6% as a result of this NVIDIA winning trade, okay, so as you can see right over here. Now, for AMD, I exited at 112.46, which is my stop loss, so in this case, I lose 1R, okay, which is 1%. Okay, and this is as illustrated, okay, hit stop loss. So, this is how, okay, we manage risk. Okay, this is how we manage uh, risk for a portfolio, okay. No one just trade, you know, 50,000, 100,000, 500,000 portfolio, okay, just as if it is, okay. If, if somebody were to trade, you know, a couple of thousand portfolio or 100,000 portfolio, Without all this risk management knowledge, from my experience, it is just a matter of time that these people will get hurt as well. You see the glove uh, rally back in 2020. How many rich people, okay, people with thick capital to get into the stock market? And then, yes, they might be winning at first, but because the lack of all this knowledge and you know, risk awareness, it's just a matter of time. A lot of them will get burned. All right. So this is the core of managing the portfolio. Okay, the core of managing portfolio. Now, I want to share with you uh, uh, a, a few things later. But let's just go through this. Now, why most people lose money leveraging, and why? By knowing proper risk management, you can actually leverage by con, uh, in, in a way that your risk is properly controlled. Okay, because why people scared of leveraging? Why you are not using your margin account to trade since you know the broker can give you or you have access to CFDs? Okay, so why most people are afraid of using leveraging? Because probably, okay, from my era, okay, my, my, my parents, my relatives, they say, oh, you know, one during 1997, you know, a lot of uh, you know, uh, tycoon, tycoon, right? they get into uh, speculating the stocks back in those times and people lose a lot of money, okay? Uh, during that time, brokers just give, you know, margins or whatever thing and, and they borrow money to the, and all the stories, okay? So that's why people lose money leveraging because they got poor risk management on their trades. Maybe because of, you know, emotions, your ego, poor analysis, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, the next is, they got no idea about portfolio management. Okay. Now, more money 
doesn't make you a better trader. You just have to remember this. More money or more capital doesn't make one person a better trader. It's true. I have seen people with seven figures portfolio just burn in a matter of, you know, a couple of months just because they got no idea on how to manage your portfolio properly. Okay. And they got no idea the odds in the market, which I'll be explaining later. And, you know, they don't know their own risk reward and then their winning rates. And also, a lot of people get into the market with gambling mindset. Wanting to get rich quick by get by betting on certain stocks to go up with the leverage. Okay, glove going up so much already. And then with all the, the things that the media put out, they borrow money. Okay, they use leverage, whatever. Okay, direct leverage with your broker, with margin accounts, or or they 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 just like you know refinance the house. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, and go all out in glove again, and then the the uptrend is a little bit short life. Okay, so and also they fail to execute stop loss. Okay, this mistake is deadly if it is paired with leverage. Okay, now I ever ask. Okay, I ever ask people who lose a lot of money in 1997, okay, and 2007, 2008, 2009. I ever interviewed a few, okay. I ask about the, the, the trades, the situation. You know, these people usually, they, they, they're fed up with the market already. But uh, I believe in one thing, okay. Stop loss will not make one person or one trader get out of business okay nobody bankrupt because of stop loss okay but a lot of people get up you know stop trading i call it bankrupt in trading like meaning that they burst their portfolios because they don't execute stop loss okay so this is very important when you pair up with leveraging that's even worse okay that's even worse all right so and also we trade based on risk not hype. Now, one key thing to uh, scale, okay, to scale your portfolio is actually based on risk involved and also your trading setup. Okay, so for example, Apple go up already and we want to write on the trend. And we want to write on a trend and I add positions when the stock price go from 151.2 Okay, 151.2 to 165.3. And my trailing stop, trailing stop is like this, huh? Okay. Trailing stop is like this. Let me let me try to, to explain. Okay. So let's say I buy the stock here when it turns up in an uptrend. Then my entry is here. This is my entry. And I put my stop loss down here. So when the stock go up, go up, go up, impossible, I still maintain my stop loss here. Okay, so what I will do is usually I move up my stop loss. Okay, and I, when it creates another wave, I move up again. This is what we call trailing stop. Okay, so usually when a stock, let's say it comes down, okay, it, like a resistance becomes support, and then it rebound again, we enter, we add more positions, and then we move our stop loss upward to become trailing stop. So here we add position. We add position. All right, so this is essentially how things, how, how we scale things, okay? How we scale things. So in this case, let's say, okay, we add positions. So for the first 88 units, which is based on this position size, we use 13,305.6. And after that, when it goes up, I add another 30 units, for example, at 165.3, and then I use up around 4.9K or $5,000 by topping up, okay, adding position. So my new average cost is 154.75, okay? So one thing is that when adding positions, you got to make sure your trailing stop is higher than your new average cost. Meaning that if I were to be wrong or things reverse, doesn't go to my direction and comes down and I hit my stop, I will not lose money. Okay, I will not lose money. This is the thing that uh, you got to know, okay, when you add positions. And adding positions 
is the key, okay, is the key to scale up your position. That's to, sorry, to scale up your portfolio. This is the first key, okay? So now if I exit at 192.84, which is the price that I exited, without adding positions, I will win 3.68R. But if I add positions, I will win 4.49R. Okay, 4.49R. So if I would exit, let's say my, I hit my trailing stop, let's say Apple goes down, okay? So I will win 0 0.013 R. Basically, it's a break-even trade. Okay, basically, it's a break-even trade. So this is basically, you see the two lines. The first line is where you can top up and here is your trailing stop. Okay, here is your trailing stop. All right, so, okay, I hope so far you guys can, can, can absorb, huh? <laughs> okay? So far you guys can absorb. Now, if you are smart enough to realize one thing, okay? So let's say here, okay, you are smart enough to realize one thing. I got 100,000, for example. Okay, I got 100,000, for example. You can see that with this, I use 13,000. Here, I use 10,000. Here, I use 11,000. Then what do I do with the, the, the rest of the money? Okay, there are a couple of things. Don't trade just because you got capital. You gotta, you gotta uh, uh, train yourself. Okay. Uh, I know some people. Okay, when their account got money, they die, die must trade. Huh? No trade, also go and take trades. Okay. Uh, we we call it hand ichi lah. Okay. So this is a habit that a trader must get rid of. All right. So again, we preserve capital. Not really like preserving, okay? But because based on risk, we are only allowed to, to you know, buy uh, 88 units and I use 13,000. 13, okay, here I use 10,000. Here I use 11,000. Okay, now, what can you do with the rest of the capital? The first thing is you can take more trades, more position, okay? I can buy the fourth stocks. I can buy the fifth stocks. If the market is really bullish, I can buy the six stocks, seven stocks. The second thing is you can add position. You can add position. So these are the things that okay, probably you already realized, but I'm just here to point it out. The second thing, okay? So first is more position. Second thing is add more position. Now, another thing is depending on your setup, okay? How you're going to take trades, okay? For example, if let's say for Apple, Let's say you you have a tight stop loss. You enter at one fifty one point two, and then you have a tighter stop loss of let's say one forty five. Okay, your position size would be larger, and you will need more money to enter that trade. Okay, you need more money to enter that trade. Okay, so if your stop loss is always like six percent from the, the 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 entry price or five percent from entry price you will probably be kept out at five stocks. Meaning that after entering five stocks, you are you max out already. Now, second thing is, this is an example of 1%. And this is an example of 1%. Now, some people can increase risk, which I'll be explaining later. Because some, some people say, if I got 100,000, I don't trade 100,000, what's the point? Okay. Uh, although this is not good, okay, to, to think that, if you got the money, you must trade all the money, but you have options, okay? You have choices, okay, which I'll be explaining later, but don't just simply scale up because you have the money, all right? Again, more capital, more money doesn't make you a better trader. You got to understand the metrics, okay? So also, okay, uh, once you have kept out, like let's say, for example, oh, the market is very good. You enter five or six stocks. You, you don't left a lot of money already. Okay, but then uh, market keep going up. You want to enter the seventh stocks or you want to top up your first or second stocks that you have already entered because the stocks has gone up by you know, 20%. You want to buy more and you're running out of capital. So this is the time I think is good if you know how to use leverage because you already know how to control the risk. Okay, so... Let me just explain, okay, with this slide. So when you're risking 1%, okay, risk per trade, 
for stocks with 10% stop loss, meaning that let's say you buy a five ringgit and your stop loss is four ringgit 50 cents. This is what I call 10% stop loss. You will use 10% of your net liquidation or capital to establish a position. Now, for example, if, you're, if you have a 6% stop loss, meaning that your stop loss is tighter, you will use 16.67% of your net liquidation to establish a position. Okay, so the tighter your stop loss, the larger your positions will be. So if you always have tight stop loss around 5 6%, okay, you will run out of capital after having five positions without leverage. You will max out already. So when there's a big trend and, you, and if you keep adding positions, you will run out of capital very quickly as well because the share price goes up higher and higher. For example, you buy a top glove last time at six, dollar, six ringgit, seven ringgit. And then it got up to 10, you want to buy more. Got up to 12, you want to buy more. Got up to 15, you want to buy more. That time, the share price has already gone up, become more and more pricey for you to buy more units. Okay? So, this is also another reason or another use case of leverage. So, with leverage, okay, you reserve your buying power and you're able to take more positions. Okay, but of course, with the risk in mind. Okay, so because after all, taking one extra position is just increasing your whole portfolio risk by 1%. Okay, so it's like the market is very good. You buy one, two, three, four, five stocks, max out ready. But all those five stocks are making money and the market is still good. Like 2020, 2021 is still good. Then what can you do? No more money but you still want to take more trades, okay? What can you do? You use leverage, okay? You use margins and things like that because you know that by taking one extra position, just increase your whole portfolio by, you know, 1%. If there's a good setup, why not? And you already have like unrealized gain or paper gain of like 10 hours from your past five stocks. Why not? You're only exposing one hour only. But sometimes when market is great, we face into problems, which is money not enough, okay? So you can add positions on current winning counters as well with leverage. Okay, as long as your new average cost is lower than your new trading stop, you will still make money if the chart turns sour. All right, so let everything sinks. Okay, let everything sink. How can you actually scale up portfolio or manage your portfolio from now on? Okay, now I know some people out there, they are risking 100,000 ringgit on one stock and that one stock, boom. Okay? And that one stock, boom. Let's say go off 50% and, you, and, and he makes 50,000 ringgit. Okay? This is what I call jackpot trades. Okay, this is what I call jackpot trades. Okay? It's like a lot of when I get into, you know, I, get, I start very young. Okay, I start very young when I was just 19 and then 21 years old, I basically start in the stock market already. And basically a lot of people are telling, ah, yeah, nowadays stocks can, a lot of, you know, relatives tell me, ah, a lot of stocks cannot, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, nowadays market different, lah, okay? you know, ah, your, your, your who and who, uncle, which uncle ah, back then, ah, buy public bank at one, two ringgit ah, and then hold all the way to 20 ringgit. Ah. Now use dividend, ah, also can pay the, your cousins, uh, school fee in Australia. Okay, now, yes, that persons make money from that particular stocks. Okay, in Malaysia context, I would say a lot of people make money from, you know, last time uh, my, my parents' era or even somehow grandparents, okay, they make a lot of money in the banking stocks back in the 90s because that was when the banking sectors, the finance sector, boom. Okay, and they really make a lot of money. And I would say that that money, that amount of money can be life changing as well. But here's the thing. My mentor shared me one thing. If this person cannot repeat the result again, okay, then this is not skill. This can be just one time luck or one time correct. Okay, and true enough, some of these people, after one time correct, okay, they hit the jackpot, they use their money wisely. But there are also 
part of these people, one time correct, make them millions, but they lost it in 2008. Over the course of one decade, they lose the money back to the market. Okay, so if you cannot repeat a result, meaning that there's no chance for that person to scale. I have a lot of friends make money from Tesla because they are Tesla boo. Last time they buy Tesla, and like a couple, couple hundred dollars, and they go up ah, 1,000 plus, then split again, then go up again, split again, or whatever thing. And it's just Tesla that makes them money. And when they invest in other shares, basically, no IC. Okay, it, it lose a lot of money. So this is what I call one time correct, but you cannot repeat. Okay, so if you want to be a true trader, you got to understand that you must know your edge. How can you repeat every now? Losing is normal in the market. Winning is, of course, winning and losing, they are part of the games. But how can you reconstruct everything so that you can progressively grow your portfolio? Okay? Is these are basically what are the things that I have discussed thus far in you know, to tonight's seminar. So, here's the thing. You're going to master the three R's of risk. So, what are these three things? I have been mentioning about risk-reward ratio, which is the R multiples, and also how can you, you know, your risk per trade, I, I keep it in 1%. The third part of the equation is actually the rate of winning. This is what I call the three R's of risk. So, your winning rate basically is out of 10 trades, for example, how many trades you make money. This is what I call win rate. It's the first one. Second one is risk reward ratio. The amount of risk taken versus the reward of 10. How many times of R you make. The third is risk per trade, meaning that for your entire portfolio, how much you risk, okay? How much you risk in one trade. Every trade, how much you risk, okay? For your portfolio. I'm not talking about the stock, how many percent you risk. risk. I'm talking about, okay? Whatever stocks, you can, you can have high risk trade, low risk trade, whereby you trade with a 10% stop loss or you have, have a super speculative trade whereby you have a very tight stop loss, whatever risk you have. But when that translates into your portfolio, that should cause the same damage to your portfolio. You get what I'm trying to say? It's okay to have high risk setup, medium risk setup, and low risk setup. That's your choice. Because I understand High risk setup, okay, let's say for example, you buy a stock at $100 and you only put like 3% stop loss at 97, okay? Now, if that $100 goes to, you know, $130, you instantly make 10 Rs. This is what I call high risk setup. But we also need to know, high risk setup, it cannot be that because it's high risk setup, it costs a lot of damage to your portfolio. So, Regardless, it is high risk setup or low risk setup. When that translates into your portfolio risk, it must be the same. Okay? That's what we call risk per trade. All right? So, here the relationship between risk reward ratio and winning rate. Okay? So, the better risk reward ratio, the lower rate of winning required in order to stay profitable. Okay? If your risk reward ratio can always be one to two, then you only need 33% win rate to break even. If you are, your win rate is more than 33%, basically you are profitable already. Profitable as in you make money trading. Okay. Now, of course, the goal is always here. So if your risk reward is one to three, okay, then if your winning rate can be like 40% or 50%, you can already be insanely profitable. Okay. Now, the bare minimum for risk-reward ratio is 1 to 1.5. And with this risk-reward ratio, you only need 40% win rate to break even. Meaning that if your win rate is 50%, you are making money. If your win rate is 60%, you are making money. It doesn't sound a lot, uh, but later when I show you okay, the calculation, you will be shocked. So traders should always work on these two metrics, which is the risk-reward and winning rate, because it defines your edge. And after that, you, once you know your edge in the market, you can easily scale your portfolio by just increasing your risk per trade or by simply taking more quality trades. Okay, 
So how can you improve and scale up profitability? So this is, okay, let me explain. Huh? All right, so this is basically this. Your win rate is 40%, okay? Your win rate is 40%, and you always risk one to make two, and you risk 1% risk per trade, okay? So how does this translate? Okay, meaning that out of, let's say, out of 10 trades that you take, four is going to make money, six is going to lose money. For that four trades that you, uh, sorry, for the six trade, for example, that you lose money, you will lose 1%. Okay, you will lose 1%. All right, and for that four trades that you make money, you will make 2%. Why? Because you always risk one to make two. Okay, it is, at least this is your average. So out of 10 trades, for example, you win four, lose six. The four winning trades will give you 8%, minus the 6%, which you lose, you end up with 2%. Now, because this is taking 10 trades, Okay, so your edge is 0.2%, meaning that every time you place one trade based on your trading tactics or rules, okay, you have a chance or on average, your portfolio will grow by 0.2%. This is what we call edge. Okay, so for every 10 trades you make, your portfolio will gain 2% in this case. All right, so doesn't sound like a lot, but that's why I say understanding all these things would make you a better trader progressively. It may not be a lot, but it will be very meaningful and in the end, it will be very life-changing. Now, for example, this is a second metrics. So what metrics okay, is being improved? You are still having 40% win rate. You are still risking 1% but you improve your risk reward to 1 to 2.5. It can be, you know, don't take profit too fast or you add a little bit of positions or you, you use trailing stop techniques to, to grab a little bit more profits. Okay, to grab a little bit more profit. So again, you out of 10 trades, you still win four and lose six. For the one that you lose, you always lose 1%. For the one that you win, you win 2.5. So four times 2.5 is 10 minus six. So now for every 10 trades you take, you are up by 4%. Okay, you're up by 4%. So your edge is 0 0.4. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Huh? By just improve your risk reward ratio from two to 2.5, your return double. Let this sink into your mind. Okay. By improve your risk reward ratio by merely 0 0.5, actually double your gain. What does 0 0.5 risk reward means? Okay. Now, for example, okay, it's not a lot. Huh? If you buy a stock at, at one ringgit, your stop loss is, okay, this is entry. Your stop loss is 90 cents. Okay, 90 cents. Initially, your take profit is 1.2, 1, 1 ringgit 20. Now, you take profit at 125. A lot of time, I tell you, based on my experience, a lot of time from, I see a lot of traders, they can squeeze a little bit more on. Just that their mentor may be not ready or they're not trained to do that or they don't have the right technique. Okay, like using trailing stops. You want to learn more of these things, okay? Make sure, okay, to join my upcoming webinars by Philip. Okay, so I have two more speaking engagements with Philip. Make sure you join. Ask your friends to join. Okay, if you learn something tonight and you think this is valuable, okay, make sure you join my two more upcoming uh, sessions. Okay, now the third one, okay, the third thing. You see, uh, risk per trade maintain, okay? Now, it's still 1 to 2.5 for risk reward. But now, you increase your win rate to 50% by maybe taking less stupid trades, <laughs> okay? Sometimes we take a lot of stupid trades, uh, okay, to be honest, all right? 
if you have been trading, you know that sometimes we, ah, yeah, why do I take this trade? Uh, things like that, uh, because it's uh, Jihana. Okay. So now maybe you just, in, so you improve one thing at a time. Okay. So now out of 10 trades, five make money, five make loss. The one that you lose, you lose 1%. The one that you make, you make 2.5. Okay. So here is 12.5 minus five. So you make 7.5% taking 10 trades. So your edge is 0 0.75. And by just improving 10% of your winning rate, you further almost double okay, your, your return again. So you see, once you know how those risk metric works, okay, you don't have to like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I'm not profitable. And then what they do, they switch entirely their strategy. But by knowing how to properly manage your risk, we take things one step at a time. Okay, we take things one step at a time. And then you can dramatically improve, okay, your performance over time. All right. So, Make improvement one step at a time. So how can you improve winning rates? Take only high probability trade, okay? And trade less when the market is weak, okay? How to improve risk reward ratio? You learn how to improve, learn and improve your trailing stop, meaning that every time when the stock goes up, you don't simply take profit, okay? You move your stops out because sometimes stocks can run further than we think. Okay, like in Malaysia, a lot of stocks have been going uptrend for many months that a lot of people, you know, wow, still can go up, wow, still go up, wow, still go up. Instead of guessing how far a stock will go, we just move our stop loss up. Okay, this is what I call trailing stocks. And also, you add positions on big movers, especially, okay, especially uh, stocks that move in a team okay like for example okay i use back the 2020 example the glove okay when all the glove stocks go up this is when you know that you can add more positions because they are the big movers that's they move in team like recently in us it is semiconductor okay so that's why we can add positions on you know nvidia you know uh, other stocks, lah, okay? There are a lot more uh, uh, semiconductor stocks, SML, MAT, or N semiconductors, okay? Or even AMD, or AMD is already out from our, my list, okay? But there are still a lot more, okay? There are still a lot more. So last but not least is cut losses quicker. When you see something not right sometimes, uh, okay? You might want to choose, you know, cut your losses earlier so that you risk less than one hour. Now, this is only for extreme situation or else usually I will stick to my trading plan. Okay. Now, once you know how these metrics works, okay, you can magnify your return by increasing risk per trade. Now, this can be very risky, but depending on your appetite. Okay. So for example, this is the example just now, whereby your winning rate is 50% and it's 1% and this is, 1% uh, risk per trade, and then your risk reward is 1 to 2.5. Okay, now if you increase your risk to 2% and automatically it doubles your return. Okay, it doubles your return because you're risking double. Okay, because you know your edge ready, you can choose to do that. But be careful of losing streaks because if your winning percentage is 50%, you can still suffer losing streaks. So when you suffer losing streaks, how are you going to cope with it emotionally? Okay, so usually I don't encourage people to just quickly increase the return, uh, sorry, increase the risk per trade, but just to let you know that this is a way. And personally, I don't increase 1% to 2%, okay? It's too much of a jump, but this is just for easier calculation. Okay, if you 3%, then higher. All right, so this is how basically 
we uh, can magnify the return in this way. Once you already know that you do good in your trading, be it risk reward or winning rate. All right. So that would conclude my sessions for tonight. Okay. And I think of Abigail, are you there? I'll pass the session back to the host. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Arjun Ha, for your insightful sharing tonight. Yeah, I believe right, our audience had a great time learning from you. So now we will uh, go to the Q&A session. So for the audience and attendees, if you have any questions, uh, do type into the chat box or the question box and uh, yep, we will answer your questions. I want to say some final words. Okay. Um, so like for tonight's topic, for a lot of people, Okay, maybe it's a very dry topic because you talk about portfolio management, risk management, okay, kind of things. Okay, so it can be a very dry topic. A lot of people choose to avoid, but I think people who choose to avoid will face some kind of problem in the future and they don't know what to fix. Okay, and I think that's a very important thing that a lot of people neglected. And I'm very... Uh, appreciative and I really feel happy for all of you who attend the sessions tonight. Okay. I don't know whether or not you are aware that there are, you know, ways to manage portfolios better. Okay. I don't know whether prior to this, you know, any techniques of, you know, managing portfolios, but after today's sessions, I believe you get a very great idea on how you know, those people just anyhow manage a uh, few hundred millions of capital, okay? There are ways. Of course, they are not risking 1%. They are maybe one trade, they risk 0.1%, 0.3%, something like that, okay? But the idea is there, okay? And one, when one thing is off metrics, they will usually quickly go back to reaccess whether or not they want to continue trading, is it the market condition not that great, not the strategy doesn't favor them, okay? At least they know that, okay? We know that things are in control, all right? Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Yes, I cannot see the question, yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, I can uh, read out the questions for you. So I have one here uh, from Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the question is this, right? It says that, is there a tool you recommend uh, for life risk management or trade management? Because okay, I think previously... For, uh, yeah, for because calculate I the position you, size. Yeah, you did mention that you can actually do a trail stop or manually adjusting. But yeah, he's asking, is there a tool like that you could recommend for a, a life risk management? Yeah. Okay, so usually, okay, there is no such thing as uh, life risk management for retail traders. So what we do is basically when we enter, okay, when we enter a trade, uh, we have to predetermine a stop loss, okay? And then the stop loss can key into your broker platform, things like that, okay? So uh, maybe Abigail later, you can explain the, the stop loss function that we have them if they ever you know need the assistance on how to set that yeah okay so basically okay basically yeah. uh we just when you buy the stock at four ringgit you gonna already know what is the point you want to cut your loss for example it can be 360 so key your stop loss at 360 okay so on how you can calculate Okay, on how you can calculate the risk, you can basically go and make an Excel file. Okay, on the, basically it's just four four things that you need to input: your entry stop loss, your net liquidation, and the risk per trade. The risk per trade can be like pretty much fixed. Uh, okay, can be pretty much fixed, and then you just uh, round round off manually. Okay, and this is if you are not you know good in calculations or you you get uh you get a little bit uh, nervous when you enter trade, okay? So first thing, when you enter, you must have uh, entry and stop loss. That's for sure, okay? You need to have stop loss first. So it's not like life managing or things like that, okay? And once the stock move after one, two, three weeks, then you see, you look at the chart later whether or not you want to uh, 
you want to move your trailing stops okay whether there's a need to move your stops okay so for example here i can just just put i can just uh do one and, and let you see for example there are only four things first is net liquidation the second is uh, risk per trade and your entry and your stop loss you only got these four things okay and the outcome is how many units you should be buying okay so basically what you do is you use net liquidation okay basically is net liquidation times this one okay wait i cannot do that first okay this one divide by entry minus stop loss and you will get it so for example your capital is not big ten thousand. okay so let's put this in dollar term this is percentage term you risk one percent or let's say because capital is small you you risk three percent okay and you have a stocks i know what stock i want to enter you might want to enter i don't know a stock is four ringgit and your stop loss is 370 yeah. there you go okay you buy 1000 unit of this share so if you buy 1000 unit of this share at four ringgit so meaning that you will be using four thousands out of your capital is that okay <laughs> i think this is helpful like, if, if you don't want to you know pull out a calculator when you want to enter then you can use you you can have excel files then buy like this or you can make it like better lah, okay design with the best font you like <laughs> okay all right yeah, yeah I, think I think that, that that's a really good explanation <laughs> yeah hmm. okay next uh we have a question from hamida so in what situation can you cut loss when it's less than one r okay a couple of situations first when let's say you see like some, sometimes there's a overall market shift of sentiment like us suddenly not good black black horse event okay and then uh everything drop and then malaysia is like a knee jerk effect if you want to reduce your risk okay for example you got 1000 unit of the shares if you are scared you can cut half first you don't have to always cut all okay you don't have to always cut all okay that that's the thing okay uh that's one of the ways the second thing in malaysia let's say malaysia stocks are okay except for penny stocks are because i personally don't trade penny stocks so for stocks above like two ringgit okay one two ringgit if the stock gap down by three percent and then continue to go down during the first one to you know half to one hour there's no sign of recovering okay i will usually dispose the positions now this is granted the entire market is okay or good only that particular stock got problem and that stock gap down by more than three percent then i'll usually this i will usually get rid the stocks because it means that something wrong with the stock if let's say the entire market everything go down some stocks get down one percent two percent some some get down five percent that one depend on uh you want to reduce your overall exposure or you want to cut everything usually i that situation we understand that is market not good maybe last night us not good then malaysia uh from 9 a.m to 9 30 everything go haywire okay then you monitor after 9 30 or after 10 will things start you know recovering a little bit here and there okay so those are the examples of situation whereby i would choose not to follow my initial stop loss all right Okay. okay yeah so next uh, we have another question so this question is uh, asking right if you are entering on a higher time frames uh okay entering on a higher time frames will have a huge stop loss if we use the r multiple would my one to two target be too far away depend okay depends so i don't know your trading patterns but for my trading patterns okay first thing my stop loss will not be more than 10%. That's the first thing. 
my stop loss will not be more than 10%. So minimum target is 1.5 R. And also if the stock does not run more than 1.5 R, I will not add any positions, not a single one. And when a stock move to one, uh, one R to my direction, I will move my stop loss to break even. These are the, the, my risk management protocol. If it goes up by one R, I move my stop loss to break even. Okay. And if it goes above 1.5 R, then I see whether or not there will be a retracement or whatever, a chance for me to, uh, you know, enter uh, new positions, things like that. Uh, not sure about your, your, your trading pattern. So I just show you, I just give you an example. The way I trade is usually, okay, let's say if I want to enter these stocks, let's say, let's say now lah. Okay, uh, not buy or sell call. Okay, not buy or sell call. Let's say I want to enter here. My stop loss would be below here. Okay, my stop loss would be below this swing low. Below this swing low. Something like this. Okay, so 8% should be fine. Okay, should be fine. All right. So you can you can use whatever your uh your what we call uh EMAs okay you can put your stop loss below the EMA twenty if you wish still okay okay still okay so for example another example let me give you uh okay uh. To me, anything less than 10% is okay. So for example, this one, you might be seeing a uh, you know, pin bar. So let's say if I want to enter this, my stop loss will be below this pin bar. Okay, my stop loss will be below this pin bar. So at the pin bar is 6%. So if I put below pin bar, it's still possible. Okay, it's still possible. All right. So this depends on, you know, how well, you understand your trading strategy. Okay, this depends on how well you understand your trading strategy. All right, so uh, that's why. Okay, if today you risk, okay, answering that person's questions, okay, if you always, you know, your stop loss, I don't know how big is your stop loss. But if based on your trading experience, if your stop loss is, I don't know how big, let's say, I don't know, 10%, okay, based on higher time frame, let's say 10%, and you always cannot get more than 15% movement based on like your own sample size, lah, okay? If you always reach 10% and you cannot make more than 15% when you are right, uh, something wrong with your strategy part of your strategy need to be uh properly examined this this is my 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 uh my this is what i would think lah, okay so if you think that 1.5 r is very hard to achieve or 2 r is very hard to achieve based on your experience then um, you might need to examine the risk reward of your strategy are you taking profit too soon something like that Okay, or are you risking too big? Something like that. All right, hope that helps. A lot of things need to be examined. All right, yeah, I think okay. that uh, that's a good uh, answer. Lah. Yeah, mm. so hope that helps. And then uh, I think we have one last question by Emmy. So on the portfolio management side, some prefer to trade by following the volume and some focus on the value and return. So for herself, she th she's a kind lost kind of lost in between lah. So is there any advice that you can give on the choices that she mentioned, whether it's volume or you know the value? Okay. Uh, depending on what's your strategy, because there's nothing wrong trading with volume or nothing wrong trading with, uh, you know, value and things like that. The only thing that I am more concerned is how much do you risk every time and how much you will make okay when it is uh you know when, when you win so 
basically, okay, if you trade with volume, uh, these people are more like momentum traders or they are day traders or contra players or they are price action traders. Okay, they might because in the stock market, it's unlike futures. Okay, futures, you, you trade CPO, you trade gold, you trade index, you, you got plenty of volume. Okay, but for stocks, a little bit more volume sometimes can mean a lot. Okay, so, uh, so are you a price action trader? That's the first thing. Uh, do you trade based on price action or do you trade on other strategies? So, uh, unfortunately, I cannot give you like A or B is better. It depends on what strategy you are leaning for, leaning towards, and uh, what kind of, uh, yeah, what kind of strategy you are leaning towards. One is uh, uh, volume. Then it means that whenever people say volume, I usually first thing that come to my mind is it is usually a fast paced, you know, trading. I don't know what's your exact strategy, okay, but no right or wrong, as long as you try it before, you back test it, you forward test it. Which one works the best for you? Okay. I've met a lot of traders in my life. Some people, they use strategies that I never understand, but they know the risk reward. They know the edge. They know the winning rate. Okay. So we kind of communicate that way. I don't try to judge other people's strategy. Okay. I think strategy is part. Sometimes we need to figure out ourselves which one is the best. All right. So for your specific questions, uh, I think this is just the surface. Okay. You've got to dive deeper into like each strategy what are the things that is work what are the things that work for you or what are the things that don't really work out for your scenario okay because sometimes it's very hard for me to comment okay whether or not how long is your holding period okay because if your holding period can be long like for me as far as stocks is concerned i track trends okay so as long as there is trend i don't care whether or not the volume is a lot or medium or a bit. As long as it's got volume, then I'm fine. Okay, so what I look for is more on trend. Okay, which is out of your two things that you mentioned just now. Okay, so yeah, it depends on your own strategy. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you A or B which one is better. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks for the. Uh... For the answers, Jinghao, I think uh, that helps uh, our audience. All right, so I think this is the end of our Q&A. And uh, for those who are actually uh, asking or interested in uh, Jinghao's uh, another two sessions, uh, the, the, the next session will be on the behaviors in investing and trading. So he will uh, elaborate more about the uh, types of behavior in the market. And then the other one, the third one will be to kickstart your stock trading journey with trend following. So if you are interested, definitely do stay tuned. We will send the links to all of you who have attended tonight. So yeah, do uh, have a look out for our um, emails. Lah. Okay. And then um, just before uh, I let you all go, so I just have a little bit of uh, info for you all as well. So yeah, uh, if you guys are keen to connect with us, uh, you can find us on our social media. You can search uh, Philip Capital Syndrome Berhad for, um, for our Facebook, YouTube, uh, and Telegram. We have a lot of uh, info, market updates, and also other promotions that uh, we put out there. Uh, our webinars and all are also recorded and uploaded on our YouTube. So yeah, you can be sure to check them out. And yeah, uh, for if you want to know more about the services that we provide, okay, you can also go to our website at www philip.com.my yeah and um this is our branches contact uh for you to reach out yep so you can always drop an email to us at pckc uh, at philipcapital.com.my if you have any questions and if you are in coaching you can also always drop by our office right uh we can always assist you uh from there on all right so uh thank you all uh for joining our webinar tonight we appreciate uh, your time and also thank you uh jin hao for your sharing uh yeah appreciate the uh the value and all your generous sharing with us lah. is there other thing my pleasure yeah, you want to, to add my on pleasure. um to add on basically i'll encourage okay all of you to join my second and third sessions okay so second sessions basically you talk about behavior Behavior is also something related to psychology, which is a big chunk of our trading success. And also from based on the behavior, we 
can also know that whether or not okay one behavior is better than another whether or not some things they need to fix again there's also something that whereby on the psychology department okay trading behaviors department uh we can fix one thing at a time okay fix one thing at a time which is very good and the third one is i would say most of you will be interested which is my personal trading strategy which gives me an average of uh, in stock market about one to three point something okay risk reward and sometimes one single trade can give me like one to ten okay so that strategy is called trend following so highly encourage you guys to come and have a look okay in case you are uh, wondering what strategy i use to trade the stock market all right so yeah i think that will be all that i want to say <laughs> okay see okay. hope to see yep. more people in the next next session yep yeah so yeah do definitely join i think uh the the value that uh, Jinhao is sharing, I think it's really incredible. So you can definitely learn a lot from him. Okay, so yeah, again, thank you all for tonight. I think that that's all for our webinar. So we'll see you in uh, the next series session. All right, thank you and good night.